Hey guys, this is 5.5 .5 from calculus. Again, we're still in the derivative chapter. This lesson is on the derivatives of logs and exponential functions of bases other than e, okay? So you're going to see log instead of ln, and then you're going to see a to the x or a to the u instead of e to the u, okay? So before we go to those derivatives, let's do two quick practice problems of solving. Remember, anytime I see an exponential function, so the function up in the exponent, the way I want to get it uh, out from up there is I apply an ln to both sides. You can apply a log. It's just a little lengthier to write. So I'm going to squeeze in here an ln so that this can move to the front. And then whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. All right. So I can say x times ln of 3 equals ln of 1 over 81. Now, we're just solving, so do not feel like you have to expand. There's no need. As long as you get x by itself, you're done. So I'm going to divide both sides by ln of 3. And yes, it does look this messy, so don't freak out. x equals ln of 1 over 81 over ln of 3, okay? Now, I usually suggest for you guys to leave it just like this. This is a correct answer. And with LNs, because they usually give you decimals, um, I suggest that you leave it like that because if not, you'll be rounding. But in this case, it actually gives you a clean answer of negative 4. And again, you just find that by plugging that into your calculator. But again, this is sufficient, and I'd rather you leave it like that. So on this next one, we talked earlier in this chapter about converting from exponential to log. That's going to be useful for isolating this x. So if we want to go from log to exponential form, we can drop the base of 2 and then switch the location of these two. So 2 raised to negative 4 equals x. And 2 to the negative 4 is actually 1 over 16. So you can have this as your answer, or you can have this as your answer, okay? Either one works. So that was just a quick recap on solving, using a lens and applying them, or having it initially in your problem. So back to this chart that we've been talking about with our rules for this chapter. Um, we've already seen a logarithm base e, so a natural logarithm. We've seen exponential functions with base e. Now we're going to see both of those rules with different bases, okay? So log of any base and an exponential function of any base, okay? Remember the rules stay the same. We just add that ln of a. So um, log is u prime over u times ln of a in the denominator. And then here it's rewrite times derivative exponent times ln of that base. So let's see... Um, some examples. These rules are very easy, guys, um, as long as you memorize them, okay? Very, very easy derivatives to solve. So here, I have a number raised to a function, so that's an a to the u, okay? So I'm going to do rewrite times derivative of the exponent, derivative of x is 1, times ln of the base. Here, my base is 2, so I have ln of 2. And this would just clean up 2 to the x, ln of 2. Nice and simple. Let's work our way down to b here. Again, I have a number in the base, so this is an a to the u rule. So, step 1 is rewrite. Then derivative of the exponent, derivative of 3x is just 3. And then times ln of the base. And the base here was 2. So this, um, there's not really much you can do to clean this up. Feel free to leave it just like that. Another option, um, again, just to take off those little dots and parentheses. But no need, okay? Let's go ahead and box that out. And letter C. Now we have... A log, L-O-G. This one is a base 10. Um, I wrote the 10, but don't always expect to see the 10, okay? Remember, base 10s is like the most common one, so they won't always put it. 
So for log functions, I'm going to do u prime over u. u is what is on the inside. So in this case, it's cosine. So let's start with derivative of cosine is negative sine of x over rewrite times ln of the base, ln of, and in this case, my base is 10. Okay, so here's one option you're going to see, but if I know the AP test, anytime you have a sine over cosine, they're going to want to rewrite that as tangent. Okay, so I'm going to write the word or here, but more than likely, they're going to write negative tangent over ln of 10. That's the type of thing the AP test likes to do to you. Again, they like to check that you understand all of math and can piece it all together, okay? So I only have three examples for you. This is literally as straightforward as you're seeing. It is that easy. Where this gets tricky, now that we've gone over all four of these, um, I want to show you some lookalikes, okay? So your notes here are called derivative Lookalikes. These are the ones where, yes, the rules are easy, but identifying which rule you have to use is what's usually the most difficult with derivatives, okay? So here are four lookalikes. We have a number raised to a number. And now anytime you see that, and I'm going to be pointing them out to you as we go, um, letter A is an example of that. E raised to E. So look at these examples really quick. We have E raised to E, E raised to X, X raised to E, and x raised to x. All look extremely similar, but they are four completely different rules. So, as we were saying, a is an example of a number raised to a number. They like to put this question with e's and also with pi's because you see these letters or symbols and you might think it has to do with a function when e and pi are just numbers. A number raised to a number is just a number. Therefore, this is just a constant rule. Okay? So, a number raised to a number, constant rule, derivative of any constant is just zero. All right, probably the easiest one you'll see. Next, we have um, a function, right, an x raised to a number. That is power rule, okay? So the one here that matches up with that, a function raised to a number, again, remember that e is just a number, would be this one down here, a function raised to a number, that's power rule. So believe it or not, pretend like if this was x squared, you would multiply that number to the front, right? And then just subtract one from the top. And I know that looks messy, but I'm not gonna find out what e minus one is, because remember e is some very long decimal. And if I subtract one, I'm gonna have to round that decimal, now it's an estimation. So I'm gonna leave it as e minus one. And I'm done with that one, okay? Next on the list, we have a number raised to x. This is the exponential rule that we just talked about, a to the u. So if you're looking here and you're trying to match, where do you see a number raised to a function? Remember, e is a number, right here. So this is my a to the u rule, or in this case, e to the u. So step one is rewrite times derivative of the exponent, derivative of x is just one, and you get e to the x. If you felt confused and did use the a to the u rule, you would have gone on to write ln of the base, which is ln of e, and ln of e also equals one. So it would not have affected your answer. All right, you might have heard um, teachers say it sometimes, or even the book that e to the x is a derivative that never dies. So if you think of like polynomials, every time we multiply the number to the front, we keep subtracting and it gets smaller and smaller, the exponent. Well, e to the x, the derivative, is just e to the x, no matter how many times you do it, okay? All right, last one and probably the most complicated one. Anytime you have a function raised to a function, we do not have an actual derivative rule for that. So for that reason, you have to manipulate it with an ln, remember the reason we like lns is because they allow us to move the function out of the exponent, okay? And then we can simply use the ln rule. So I'm going to 
manipulate it with ln. I'm going to apply that ln to both sides. Okay. And now I'm going to be able to move this guy out. And now I can use one of the rules that I actually have and know. So ln of y equals x times ln of x. Now I just have a product rule with lns. On the left side, derivative of ln of y is y prime over y. Okay. Here we have product rule. So we have first times derivative of the second. Okay. U prime over u. Derivative of x is just 1 over x. Plus derivative of the first times rewrite. Okay. Hopefully this question is looking a little familiar. We've seen something like this already. So I'm just going to clean the right side first. Right, these, this would give me x over x. The x's cancel out, so I'm just left with 1 plus 1 times ln of x is just ln of x. Now, remember, I'm not done with the problem until I have y prime by itself and I have everything in terms of x. So I'm going to start off by multiplying a y to both sides. Okay, now this y does not just go to the ln of x, it goes to the entire right side. Be careful with that, okay? So now on the left, I've isolated y prime. And then I want everything in terms of x. So instead of saying times y, remember that the original question told you that y is equal to x raised to x. So I'm going to change this y to say x raised to x. And now this is um, probably the simplest way to just leave your answer. You could distribute that x raised to x. But again, take a look at your multiple choice options and don't oversimplify.